Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson. In this one we'll be making a start on topic 1.1, the structure and function of the skeletal system, beginning with the very first learning objective, the names and locations of the major bones. Now I'll be making a video covering each of these learning objectives as well, so make sure to subscribe. If you want to access the full video covering the entirety of topic 1.1, I'll link that one down below. By the way, if you like the slides I'm using here, you can download individual chapters or purchase the whole course as a bundle. I'm also working on a revision guide for students and once that's done I'll put a link in the description to that one as well. Okay let's make a start on the names and locations of the major bones. We'll begin with the bones of the axial skeleton which is the central core of the skeleton to which the arms and legs are attached. Now you don't actually need to know the definition of the axial skeleton but I thought I'd include it here to give a little bit of context. The bones that make up the axial skeleton are the cranium or skull, the vertebrae which are in individual bones which sit on top of one another to form the spine or vertebral column, the sternum or breastbone, and the ribs which make up the rib cage. Next, the bones of the appendicular skeleton, or the bones of the arms, legs, hands and feet, and the structures that secure these bones to the axial skeleton. Again, you don't need to know the definition of the appendicular skeleton. We'll begin with the three bones that articulate or join together to form the shoulder joint. So we have the clavicle or collarbone, the scapula or shoulder blade, and the humerus. Moving down to the elbow joint, the humerus articulates with two bones in the forearm, the radius, which is the one that sits in line with the thumb, and the ulna. At the wrist joint, the radius and the ulna articulate with the carpals, which are a group of short bones at the top of the hand. The carpals are connected to the metacarpals in the middle, and the metacarpals are connected to the phalanges or finger bones. Moving on to the hip joint, we have the pelvis, which articulates with the femur, the longest bone or the largest bone in the human body. At the knee joint, the femur articulates with the tibia, which is the larger of the two bones in the lower leg. The other one being the fibula. Now the fibula doesn't actually articulate at the knee joint. Uh, you might be able to see here just about, but the head of the fibula sits just below the head of the tibia. So it's the tibia and the femur that make up the knee joint. The other bone here is the patella or kneecap, which protects the internal structures of the knee joint and provides a little bit of stability as well. Moving down to the foot, uh, you can see the tibia and fibula, the two bones in the lower leg there. At the top of the foot we have the tarsals, not to be confused with the carpals at the top of the hand, the metatarsals in the middle, again not to be confused with the metacarpals in the hand, and then the phalanges or toe bones. So the phalanges, we have the same name for the toe bones and the finger bones. Okay, so that's literally everything you need to know on the names and locations of the major bones. So there's that first learning objective covered. But before we finish, I'll just show you a couple of exam questions to put this information in context. So the first one is a football player suffers a fracture in the lower leg above the ankle. Name one bone in the lower leg that may have been fractured. Our options are the tibia and fibula and I've gone for the fibula here. Next we have a multiple choice question which is a popular one for uh, the names and locations of the bones. Which of the following correctly names the articulating bones in the elbow joint? So the bones that join together to make up the elbow joint. This one of course is option B, the humerus, radius and ulna. The radius being the one that sits in line with the thumb. Final one then, another multiple choice question, which one of the following states the correct names for the two bones in the lower leg? So of course this one is C, tibia and fibula, not to be confused with tibula and fibula, option B there, so clearly you need to remember the spellings of these bones as well. Okay, so that's everything for this video on the first learning objective, the names and locations of the major bones. Join me next time for the second learning objective where we'll be covering the functions of the skeleton.